I laugh when people say the dream is to live their life in adventures like traveling, trekking, eating luxurious foods. And on the other hand, they go on crying about their problems in life. But they don't realize this fact that those problems in themselves are the greatest adventures. Adventure is not an objective phenomenon. It depends on your subjective mood. It depends on how you approach life. A businessman may not be able to enjoy the adventures even if he is in Dubai due to lack of time or business worries. But a drunkard may get full enjoyment of the adventure of cursings in a lone night due to total involvement in cursings. It is your total involvement that brings adventurous way of approach. Even playing with an insect can be an adventure if you really know the art of being adventurous. Adventurous is your very nature. The whole life, it's every moment from birth to death is an adventure. You can relate it with childhood. In childhood, we all were extremely adventurous. Even in small, small things like in rainy mud or in simple games. But what happens to this adventurous mood when we grow? Here the society comes in, religious conditioning comes in, educational conditioning comes in. They all enforce principles on you, stamps morality on you, set disciplines on you. Even academic education is not an education at all, it is factory of making robotic humans for corporate companies. That is why these internet sites ask you to confirm if you are not a robot. Because most of the people are robots, the remotes are in the hands of the religious leaders or money. And these people think conditioning a child is maturing a child. This is not maturing, this is murdering. Murdering of the freedom of child, murdering of the authenticity of child. Wisdom, intelligence, real education, truth cannot be given by impositions. It cannot be enforced. It has to come from instinctual and intrinsic freedom and awareness of a child's being. You just help, you just direct, but don't impose anything on a child. The moment you impose any idea, you inhibit a child's search from understanding that idea itself. Because now he will not think deeply about that idea, he will simply believe it. And he will also get the addiction of believing in this way. You never imposed walking on a child, yet he learned. You never imposed speaking on a child, yet he managed to learn. That too, very fast. But you imposed your so-called religious, moral, educational conditionings on children. And yet most of the people are still not being able to truly religious, moral or educated. In fact, opposite is the case. Life comes with all that it needs. You just need to direct it. A seed grows by itself into its own unique and beautiful pattern as a tree with the help of soil, water and sunlight. When the seed needs soil, it will take help of soil. When the seed requires water, it will ask for water. But the soil, water and sunlight are not imposing their powers on the poor seed. They are helping the seed by giving only that which it requires. If they give extra, the seed will simply die. Help children in their respective interests and way of understanding. Don't impose your debt conditionings on them. Your intentions are good, but it is not healthy for a child's authentic growth. If water out of love gives extra water to a seed, what will happen? The seed will die. Similarly, all these conditioning destroy purity and innocence of a child's soul. It is not puberty that destroys innocence, it is societal conditionings that destroy innocence. And without innocence, there cannot be an adventure at all. It is innocence that brings adventure, not materialistic things. All things are just colors and disordered shapes. It is innocence that sees beauty in them. So throw all your conditionings and past in a dustbin and live spontaneously with innocence like children.
in the end how you lived your life matters not how you showed or what others thought about your life